you know, you're charging students who already can't afford a meal plan and now you're making it mandatory. It just sort of not only forces low income students off campus, but now they don't have access to on campus resources. And so I had two locks on my bike. And so I was pretty not worried about getting my bike stolen. And so I went to where my bike was and it was gone. Precautions is obviously to wear your mask the entire time that you're walking around. Not one of those where you do this or this. And welcome to Arizona Cat's Eye, a new show produced by the students of the University of Arizona School of Journalism. I'm Michaela Elledge. Some University of Arizona students are fighting back against the idea of a mandatory meal plan. It's a plan they say especially hurts low-income students on the Tucson campus. The University of Arizona planned to implement a mandatory meal plan for students starting in the fall of 2021, which sparked some outrage among the campus community. Dorothea Stevenson, a student at the University of Arizona, along with the Residence Hall Association, took action and started a petition against a mandatory meal plan to protect low-income students. And you're raising the meal plan by almost double um, for the minimum one. And you know, you're charging students who already can't afford a meal plan and now you're making it mandatory. It just sort of not only forces low-income students off campus, but now they don't have access to on-campus resources. And I think that can definitely negatively impact students and um, definitely hinder their academic success. The petition has received an overwhelming amount of support from students with over 2,000 signatures against the meal plan. This idea behind the petition was that it would help us not only sort of explain to students what was happening, but hopefully inspire students to sort of take action, sign the petition, and sort of spread it to other people who could hopefully make a difference. On March 26th, Todd Malay, the executive director for the Arizona Student Unions, officially withdrew his proposal with the Arizona Board of Regents for a mandatory meal plan. We've managed to stop it temporarily, but this is not, you know, an issue that's been put to rest, um, I guess, permanently. And so we still have to sort of keep pushing um, and sort of figure out the next steps. For Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Michaela Elich. With the spring semester coming to a close here on campus, graduating seniors are preparing for an in-person graduation ceremony held at U of A Stadium. In a statement Wednesday, President Robert Robbins announced that graduating seniors will be allowed guests at commencement. So I decided to talk to several seniors and get their perspective on the sudden change. I think if, if we weren't allowed to at least have a few people there, I think it'd just feel weird and not normal at all. And it'd take the, the whole purpose because you want to have a graduation, you know, for your family too, for pictures and the memories and all that. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I wasn't going to go to graduation at first um, with just students attending, but now that we can have guests, um, I'm pretty excited to go. Each graduating senior will be able to bring up to four guests for in-person commencement ceremonies that will be held all around campus, including the U of A Stadium. If you have family that's unable to make the in-person commencement, don't worry. Each commencement will be live streamed so you can have your family cheering you on at home. This has been Keenan Hubble, Arizona Cat's Eye. Tucson Unified School District created some options for students to return back in person during COVID-19. But these choices aren't proving too popular with the parents. Tucson Unified School Districts reopened for the first time since COVID the week of March 22nd. And to most surprise, only about 50% of students chose to return. Pre-K, K-8, and elementary schools had the option of either going completely in person or staying completely remote due to only having one primary teacher. Karina Montano is a TUSD parent that has a daughter in elementary school. She says she's more than happy for her to finally return back in person. I just wanted her to be able to at least see some friends and, and just really get that social aspect. Um, 
And I mean, with everyone getting like vaccines and stuff, I feel like, okay, maybe it's a little bit better. The middle school and the high school's plans were a little more complex as students rotate to multiple different teachers and classrooms over a course of six periods. The plan was to split the school up and have only 50% of students on campus at a time. Half of the students would go in person on Mondays and Thursdays for periods one through three, then return home for remote learning periods four through six. Vice versa would occur for the other half of students. Wednesdays would be a remote day for everyone and used as a classroom cleaning day. More updates and changes about the reopening can be found on TUSD's website. I'm Kelly Harrison for Arizona Cat's Eye. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has decided to lift the mask mandate order that was in place to protect against COVID-19. Some mayors, including Tucson's own Rahina Romero, believe he is wrong and has kept this order in place. The statement that Rahina Romero put out says that Governor Doug Ducey's executive order was premature and will jeopardize Arizona lives. Essentially, she is saying she will not listen to this order whatsoever, even though Governor Doug Ducey is saying she has no authority to make this ruling. Originally, this was supposed to affect Tucson greatly, but now with Mayor Rahina Romero fighting back, everything's changed. Here, I interview U of A student, Zach Rubenstein. If you believe that local governments have a better idea of what's going on in their respective places, then Mayor Romero's statement would lead you to believe that she knows she has enough information in front of her to say that Tucson should therefore have a mask mandate. And if she knows that Tucson should have a mask mandate, the governor should listen, regardless of whether or not he's in the city. Essentially, the lowest form of government should make the biggest decision because they know their people. For Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Charlie Smith. Bicycle theft is an ongoing problem at the University of Arizona campus. I met with students who want more to be done to solve the issue. The University of Arizona experiences bike theft like no other. In one of the most bicycle-friendly cities in the nation, students have dealt with bike theft for years. The campus provides various bike racks all around campus to ensure for an easier commute for its students. I'm currently standing outside the Lycans dorm on the U of A campus, and right behind me is a parking structure for bicycles. They're all locked up in this cage. Students have access through their cat card, and it avoids all of those easy access to steal bike locks and bike racks that you recently saw on campus. I got the chance to speak with the University of Arizona student Victor Verbalitis to talk about his experience with bike theft. And so I had two locks on my bike. I had um, like a long one that went around and then like a second one to like really lock it in. And so I was pretty not worried about getting my bike stolen. And so I went to where my bike was and it was gone. And I looked around for like 10 minutes, ended up being like 20 minutes late to class and never saw my bike again. And so when I saw that happen, I was extremely worried. I was like, well, what do I do? I can't believe my bike got stolen. I had two locks on it. So I told the Honors Village front desk, I was like, hey, my bike got stolen here. Um, is there any like camera footage or anything? And they said they'd check it and they never got back to me. Any student dealing with theft on campus can contact UAPD directly to come to a resolution. For Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Tyler Presidento. The rollback on COVID-19 mandates means that sports fans are excited to attend baseball games again, but they are finding out that the new normal still includes restrictions. It's April, which means baseball season is back. However, stadiums will not be as full of fans as they usually are due to COVID-19 precautions. Petco Park, the home of the San Diego Padres, has a variety of cautions in place in order to keep the fans, the players, and the staff safe. Precautions is obviously to wear your mask the entire time that you're walking around. Not one of those where you do this or this. They have to be full, full nose covered. Uh, we do ask that if you've been places, wash your hands constantly just like anything else. So that's the basic COVID rules. Uh, staying six feet apart from each individual that's in here as far as in groups. Obviously if somebody's close to you then they're going to be together. Once that you're in here, if you're eating food, you don't have to have the mask on or straw through your mask, obviously. So there's some common sense rules here. Uh, we're try, going to try to be very relaxed as far as uh, if they're eating and drinking, then yeah, we're not going to pay in that. But if you're moving around and walking around, 
Now you got to not have your mask on. The seating at Petco Park this season is socially distanced. Only seats that do not have covers on them are allowed to be sat in. This ensures that fans will be at least six feet apart from other parties. The seat covers at the ballpark are sponsored by American Medical Response. The seats in the grass area are socially distanced as well. Hopefully having fans back at Petco Park brings the San Diego Padres luck this season. For Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Sophia Flores. This has been Arizona Cat's Eye, a student production from the University of Arizona School of Journalism. I'm Keenan Hubble. See you next time.